Welcome back to another episode of Microwave Playground, where today we'll be making chloroform. Now, chloroform is one of the most powerful solvents in all of organic chemistry. It can dissolve lipids, waxes, resins, alkaloids, and a whole host of other long, big hydrocarbons. It can also be used as a reagent, such as in the Riemer-Tiemann oxidation, which introduces aldehyde groups to phenols. It can also be made into a dichlorocarbene radical in the presence of a strong base in order to make cyclopropanones. So today, I'm going to show you how to make chloroform using just pool chlorinating liquid and acetone, and this method guarantees the most chloroform for your buck. The materials you'll need are a four-quart bowl, one gallon of 10% sodium hypochlorite, chilled prior to use, table salt, anhydrous magnesium sulfate, a large syringe, and an opaque bottle. What we're first going to do is just pour all of this. We're going to be needing all of this for our experiment. Once again, make sure it is chilled prior to use. You might even want to do a little flash freeze an hour before you're going to actually use it. So you want to store it cold, but before you use it, you want to freeze it. What we first need is 125 milliliters of acetone. This corresponds roughly to about 1.6 moles. The next thing we're going to do is load up our syringe. Now the reason why you want to do this versus direct pour is that the acetone will tend to sit on top, superheat with the contact of the chlorinating liquid, and it will just boil off and you're going to lose a lot of acetone. So this is why you want to inject it right into the heart of the chlorinating liquid. And you also want to make sure the acetone doesn't touch the rubber tip because it can solvate it. So you want to stir it. As you're stirring, you just slowly, slowly pour it in. Now this is cold, so you're not going to get a lot of evaporation loss, but it's still good you take these precautions. We're going to load up another shot. And then once again, with our strategy, right, slowly pour it in. As you can see, our acetone is starting to react. Now, we're also going to add the, the rest of this, because I can't get it in the syringe. We're gonna add the rest of this manually. And as you can see also, the green part, it was once fully green, now it's kind of this grayish green, is because the chlorine is being used up as it's making the chloroform. Now it is solidly opaque because the reaction is in full swing. To minimize chloroform loss and acetone evaporation, you'd want to put a seal over it. It's going to be kind of hard to unfold with the wind that's going on. About 30 minutes in, you're going to see our solution is very dull. It's light green, but it's not that full concentrated liquid green that you saw a while back. That's because most of the chlorine has been used up. Now, if you zoom in real close, you can see this bubble layer. That's our chloroform made. Now, because it's a four quart bowl, you might think this is not a lot of chloroform, but by the surface area alone, we have a lot of chloroform. Now, this is good, but I think we can do better. So, we're gonna try to salt out some of the chloroform. So we're going to start adding some salt and just see where we go with this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's a lot of salt. And we're just going to stir it around a bit more. Until all the salt dissolves. After about 10 minutes, 
we're going to see how much chloroform we have now. This will be our final amount. As you can see, the chloroform bubble in there, it's quite big, especially wide. It takes up the whole base. Now, chloroform is very slightly soluble in water, but the salting out will make sure that it's practically insoluble in water. Now, the decanting, you want to be very careful. You don't lose any chloroform. So you want to do this very slowly. Now, we are at an amount where our chloroform is going to be very fickle to get out. So we have to do some extra processes in order to get this out. Now, it's very important you do, you do all your reactions slowly because you don't want to disturb the chloroform bubble. It's surprisingly fragile and it can easily go inside the water solution. What we're left with after our hard decantation the first time is this thin aqueous layer and then we have our chloroform layer. As you can see, they're very close together and stuff and we don't want to lose any more chloroform. So we have to find a way to get it out with the least amount of aqueous liquid. So we're going to try another method. Let's try to scoop. As you can see, we have a big chloroform bubble in there, but we also have our aqueous layer. So we have to allow this to rest for a bit. That way all the bubbles can reconstitute into a big bubble and we can slowly pour off the aqueous. After we decanted most of our solution, we still have our chloroform bubble and a little bit amount of aqueous liquid, but we're gonna process that later. So we're gonna pour this into our little storage unit. And then we're gonna set them aside and do it again. After doing our extractions and decantations, we got roughly a little, a little over 100 milliliters. So we're not done yet, we're almost done. All right, look how crystal clear that is. It's very, it's highly refractive, as it's been known to be called. We're gonna just put in a little bit of anhydrous magnesium sulfate. This will dry out any water that the chloroform solvated. And we're gonna shake it around Now you're going to see that the anhydrous magnesium sulfate doesn't even dissolve. That means we have pure chloroform in here and we have no water at all. All the water has been sucked out by the anhydrous magnesium sulfate. Finally, we're going to bottle this and put this away for future use. Make sure you don't get any magnesium sulfate in there. And you might be able to notice the little water bubble that is surrounding the magnesium sulfate. So we don't want that in there. So that will be enough for a decantation. And just like that, we have made chloroform. We actually made over one mole of chloroform because of the techniques that we used. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.